Now from the Cambrian, we're going to move on to the Ordovician period. In this period, which covers from 488 million years ago to 443 million years ago, we see a lot more of the interesting uh, diversification of life as well as some other distinctive things. For instance, green plants and fungi first appear on land here. Um, invertebrates in the marine community diversify greatly. This is where we first see conodonts. And conodonts, uh, if you're any kind of economic geologist, you're going to see these again, especially if you work in oil and gas. Because this fossil, and for the longest time, uh, scientists had no idea what this fossil belonged to. Um, but it turns out that it's the complicated, not jaw, but sort of mouth anatomy, teeth and different little bones of this nasty, tiny, little worm-looking creature. Uh, why is this particularly useful to economic geologists, especially oil and gas? Well, not only can these fossils be used um, as great time markers because they change so much over uh, short periods of time, but they're also very useful to find out the subsequent geologic history of a formation in terms of temperature, because conodont fossils have the unique property of changing in a linear way along a color scale in response to temperature changes. So there is a color scale uh, defined for these fossils from bone white to amber to translucent that indicate how much temperature this formation has undergone. Now, the reason this is useful is because if you're trying to get oil or gas out of a formation and you know that it has undergone extreme temperatures, uh, that oil or gas that uh, was deposited before those temperatures, it's not going to exist anymore. And so you know that there's no point in dropping a well there. Imagine the use this knowledge has been to the oil and gas industry. So getting familiar with conodonts is very important, and they show up in the Ordovician. Um, another thing that defines this period is that the extinction event that marks the end of it is the third largest of the five major extinction events that happen on the Earth. It's the very first one, and uh, this is where the overall largest loss of life on Earth takes place. Now there's a pretty big one at the KT boundary, but this one, uh, you know, you define it differently in terms of how many species were wiped out or in terms of plain numbers. But in numbers, this one wins. The overall largest loss of life marks the end of this period as well as an ice age, which is probably very closely associated with that extinction, I would think. Now as we move on, we're going to talk about the Silurian period. This occupies the time from 443 million years ago to 416 million years ago. We're still in the Phanerozoic Eon, we're in the Paleozoic Era, let's keep that in mind, and this is the Silurian period. And this is defined by the first vascular plants. Um, vascular meaning that they've got an internal sort of vein setup where water and mineral transport can take place. And why is this important? Because it allows a plant to grow larger. If you have to take your water and your mineral supply directly from the ground and you can't bring it up uh, stalks, then you're going to have to live very close to the ground, so you're going to grow very small. Um, remember, in the water, this isn't really important because it's floating around you, but on land, it makes a big difference. And that's why there weren't any vascular plants when it was all marine plant life. It wasn't necessary. But here in the Silurian period, we see the, the first vascular plants on land. And then we see the first jawed fishes. And there's these jawless armored fish that are kind of roaming the seas as well. They're sort of in charge in this period. Here you see a dominance of your tabulate and rugose corals. There's brachiopods around, crinoids, trilobites, mollusks, graptolites. These are things that you've heard about before, and they're things that are occupying the landscape, as it were. And then we move on to the Devonian period. And the Devonian period, from 416 million years ago to 359 million years ago, is where you see the first seed-bearing plants. You got trees and ferns. Remember, trees are able to grow because now plants are vascular and they can grow very large. Um, you see the wingless insects start to appear. There's not any winged ones, but there are insects. 
uh, you've got lots of the jawfish and lots of the sharks that are now taking over the seas. They have won out over those armored jawless fish. Now you see the first amphibians. Devonian period is where the first amphibians are, but these amphibians are still aquatic. They're not on land yet. And then at the end of this, you have two major extinction events that sort of combine as the second of the five major extinction events that we talk about. The first one is called the Kelwasser event, and then the Hangenberg event. And with these two combined, 19% of all the families and 50% of all the genera went extinct on Earth. So a major extinction marks the end of the Devonian period. Now next, we're going to talk about the Carboniferous period. Um, it is divided into the Mississippian and the Pennsylvanian periods as well. So in some uh, vernacular, you're going to see the use of Carboniferous, which includes both of them. In other vernacular, you're going to see the separation Mississippi and Pennsylvanian, but just know they're the same thing, um, just one is a finer delineation. The Carboniferous lasted from 359 million years ago to 299 million years ago. The earliest part of it, the, uh, the Mississippian, is from 359 to 318 million years ago, and the Pennsylvanian from 318 to 299. Uh, here is where you see all of that lovely coal uh, being deposited. There are rich coal forming swamps everywhere in this period. Uh, you see a lot of really large trees and here in the Carboniferous is when you see the very first land vertebrates. So remember in the Devonian we had amphibians that were aquatic but now we're seeing them come onto land in the Carboniferous. Um, here you see a whole lot of glaciation in eastern Gondwana and remember that lies in the southern part of the globe up here and a lot of that glaciation is a historical record that we still look at today. Notice in this time you have huge winged insects. I've showed uh, a little cartoon of one of them here, very dragonfly-like. It's not a dragonfly, but it, it looks a lot like it with wingspans of up to two and a half feet. Imagine that kind of gross. Um, you also see uh, the first reptiles and this is in the Pennsylvanian period where you see the first reptiles appear and at this point in history the atmospheric oxygen level is the highest ever. Now the next period, our Permian period, is the last of our Paleozoic era and in the Permian period which is from 299 million years ago to 251 million years ago, we see Pangaea unite. That is the third supercontinent. Remember we had Rodinia and then we had Panatea and now we see Pangaea. And uh, that happens, uh, as that happens, we also see an orogeny that starts to form the Appalachians. And remember the Appalachians which are in the eastern um, intercoastal area of the US are very very old mountains rounded off because they've been eroded away just sort of rolling mountain hills but it's back in the Permian when they begin to be formed. We also see cone bearing gymnosperms and mosses, beetles and flies appear. Um, here we have the Permian Triassic extinction event because we're going to move from the Paleozoic era to the Mesozoic era. So marking the end of the Permian, this, the third of the Earth's five major extinction events, occurs. And that's, again, about 251 million years ago. At this time, 95% of all life on Earth is estimated to have disappeared. And this is when trilobites die out. So trilobites have spanned the entire Paleozoic from the Cambrian until the Permian, but they are finally no more. So as we move forward, we kind of sum this up. Let's remind ourselves. We've gone through the Paleozoic era. We saw life explode in the Cambrian. We saw the plants come onto land in the Ordovician. In the Silurian, we saw vascular plants. We saw jawed fish and amphibians in the Devonian. Uh, Seed-bearing plants came along. We remember the swamps of the Carboniferous and the reptiles that came in the Pennsylvania and the later Carboniferous. And finally in the Permian we talk about Pangaea uniting. And Pangaea is one of the uh, paleogeographical things that you're going to talk about a lot in geology. And then we have to remember that 
Permian-Triassic boundary marked by the third major extinction event on Earth when so much of life was wiped out.